So, um, yeah, hello, my name is Chris. Uh, we have uh, gathered here in, in, Alto, in the Alto Fab Lab, um, which is in, in Finland, uh, Helsinki. And today we are going to talk about uh, Fusion 360 basics. Uh, we are going to build a snap fit box uh, out with, with, with it that's in the following um, in one of the following evenings, we are also going to try laser cut our CNC mill. And as a as a first step that we need to do is uh, to install uh, Fusion 360. I hope that most of you have done it uh, already, or at least done it halfway. Um, so in order to do it, uh, go to Autodesk Fusion 360 website. Um, And uh, you can download a free version for students and edu educators, or also if, if you're a hobbyist or a maker or a startup, then they, are, they also have some kind of offering. Uh, but in, as, as for the people who are in the room, then yeah, just uh, maybe use your auto email addresses and you will be able to download and install it for free. Good. Okay, we can start now. Um, so yeah, um, Fusion 360 is a really nice piece of software for designing all kinds of 3D objects and uh, then mm, also uh, also for uh, for manufacturing them. Um, so it has uh, like the basic modeling. Uh, so when, whenever you open it first, it uh, it ends up in a, in a basic mo modeling uh, environment. Um, so 3D modeling. Which is a bit different from mm, from the ones you would uh, you would see in Blender or Maya or um, other uh, other three D three D modeling software that is uh, more designed for for designing three D graphics and animation. Mm, so uh, Fusion three sixty is one one of the one of the kinds of uh, programs which is uh, made for. Uh, Designing three D models uh, for for more for technical purposes. Uh, so when you open it up, um, you will see the default modeling um, environment. But you can change that to other uh, environments uh, such as generative design, patch, sheet metal, uh, also render animation and uh, manufacture workspaces. Uh, but for, for the basics part, we are just uh, going to stick to the modeling um, workflow, to the modeling uh, workspace. And um, yeah, I'm going to explain the interface a tiny bit. Mm. So up here you see the, the project name and at the point we have it, uh, we have it set to untitled. We haven't really defined uh, the project name yet, we haven't saved it. Then here you have uh, the basic uh, icons that you would see in other uh, software uh, as well, so such as the file menu, which lets you to create a new design and uh, export and import things. Uh, then a save icon, undo, redo, and then the show data panel uh, icon, which opens the data panel, which is uh, basically um, uh, kind of a uh, uh, kind of a link to your Autodesk account, to your Autodesk Cloud account. Uh, and uh, all the files, uh, all the projects that you are going to save um, in Fusion 360, uh, they are going to be automatically synchronized with the cloud. Um, then you have the tools menu. So for every workspace, the tools menu is a little bit different. Um, so in some, in some situations, actually a lot, of, a lot different, a lot more different. Uh, and then on the left side you have the project browser, uh, which has um, items that are, which looks pretty much uh, similar as layer panel in, in other applications or project panel in other applications. So these triangles can be opened uh, and you can see all kinds of things under these uh, folder items. Uh, so bulbs are used across this interface in order to show and hide uh, things. So if the bulb is not on, then it means that the object or, or the element is hidden. But if it's on, then, then uh, you, can, you should be able to see it on the screen. 
Uh, then here uh, you can see the of the cube or the navigation cube. So you can use this cube uh, in order to pan um, and orbit around your object um, that you have created, that we will create um, a little bit later. And then on the bottom side you can see that you have a little place where to add comments for the project. Um, has some um, some icons that can be used to change the uh, to change the visual appearance of the interface. Uh, so in this case, I'm gonna put it to hidden edges, or I think by default it's shaded. Uh, yeah, and then on the very bottom, uh, there's the timeline, uh, which is more like a project history timeline. And once we, we are going to start to build something, you will see that each step is going to uh, going to be recorded in this timeline. And uh, with this uh, triangle equipped uh, vertical line, you will be able to move um, uh, back and forth in the project history. Uh, in Fusion 360, uh, the modeling usually starts from a sketch. Um, and in order to create a new sketch, you, you have to click this sketch button here, create sketch. And uh, once that is done, uh, you have to choose one of the planes where you want, want to create a sketch, because sketch, by default, the concept of sketch is two-dimensional. Uh, and let's choose... Um, the surface or the plane between the x and y axis because like usually uh, also from from maths in school uh, usually the x and y axis are the ones that we are usually working with and uh, z axis is something a bit more um, exotic so let's choose the the plane between x and y axis and at this point you should get into into the sketch um, environment um, which is a sub environment of the 3d environment uh, and uh, once you once you get into the sketch environment, uh, also a sketch palette uh, on the on the right side of the screen will open, and it has all kinds of nice features and, and good looking icons there uh, that we are going to use. Um, but first, uh, first things first. In order to create a box, we will need a base for the box, uh, and it's going it's going to be a square. Uh, and for the square, we have a width and height, um, and square or, or a rectangle. So basically we need to have a rectangle. In order to create a rectangle there are many options um, and one of the most used is uh, uh, the sketch rectangle two-point rectangle tool uh, that you can also access by hitting um, by hitting the R key and uh, so yeah go on and choose the tool. So sketch rectangle two-point rectangle R um, and then it, Fusion is going to actually instruct you what to, what to do. So when you, don't, when you stop moving your mouse, it's going to tell you that, place, that you have to place the first corner of the rectangle. So you set the first corner, and then you click and drag, and you stop a little bit, and Fusion is going to tell you that you have to specify the size of the rectangle, or maybe this is not that clear, it's just that you drag around you drag your mouse cursor and then you click uh, somewhere else and then this makes a rectangle here. Uh, and when you hit escape you, you exit the rectangle creation mode and you can click and drag these uh, points and lines and you see when, whenever you are uh, clicking and dragging these points then uh, so all the lines they stay uh, parallel and perpendicular and this is because these uh, little icons here, uh, which actually are features that, that have been added by default uh, by this rectangle tool. So these are the, the constraints. Um, so for example, this constraint means that this line is parallel to the, to the other line. Um, and the same goes for these ones. And um, so while making sketches uh, in Fusion 360 and uh, in, in other CAD programs, um, it is very important to make these sketches uh, fully constrained so that so that these points cannot be moved around so easily so that uh, the, the rest of the design that we are going to create based on this sketch that it actually... Sorry, Chris, how, how do you, how do you say this? 
model because I, I just did it and then if I go to corner, I don't yeah. get anything. Then you know, hit escape once. Escape. Yeah, and this is going to disable the, the tools and then it should be possible to click on the corners. Are you able to do that? No. Ah, maybe then... Let me see. Uh, okay. Ah, you already... Can you put here? Oh, so oh like, okay. okay. That was. That was made, made yeah, okay. That was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. All yeah. right. Oh, so, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's an in interesting actually uh, thing to mention that uh, if you cannot select these, uh, if, if these uh, lines and points do not highlight when you hover them, then maybe check the selection filters. And in, in, uh, yeah, in our case, it was that uh, only one of those was selected. So we'll just uh, click the select all and, and then everything was uh, fine again. Uh, one thing that uh, I noticed with you is that you uh, try to make the rectangle uh, kind of snap to the to the middle uh, to the center of, of the of the uh, so in the c crossing point of the x and y uh, axis uh, at this point let's not do it because we actually want the the rectangle to uh, to be in the center to kind of the center of the rectangle to match the center of the of the stage. Uh, so and this is the next step that we have to solve. Um, uh, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of uh, construction lines. Um, in order to create construction lines, you need to use the line tool. So you click on that. You, you can also activate it by hitting the the L. So L. And then when you slowly hover um, any of the lines, you will see that in the center of the line, a small rectangle of triangle is going to appear. Uh, and this little triangle means that uh, Fusion uh, has found the midpoint of that line that we are hovering. And this is exactly what we need at the point. We need to start, um, we need to draw a line from, from the midpoint uh, of the top line to the midpoint of the bottom line. So you need to do two clicks here, like that. Uh, next thing is uh, that we need to create another line, which is from the midline of the left line to the, to the from the midpoint of the left line to the midpoint of the of the center line that we just created, like this. And so far, like at least for me, I found that this is the easiest way uh, and the most useful way to define the center of the uh, of a rectangular object. Because then after you can use these, so it kind of nicely separates the, uh, so it creates a, a point um, in the center of the rectangle. Um, it wouldn't be the case if you would just draw two lines that would be crossing, so you would need to add the point separately. But this is the kind of the shortest path to, to create, a, to get a center um, point at the, at the middle of the rectangle. And uh, now we need to crew to transform them into construction lines. In order to do that, I was uh, uh, you hit escape to um, to activate the selection mode, and then you select both of these lines. And uh, one way is to use this construction icon over here, or you can just hit X on the keyboard, and and the lines should become dashed. Like as you see in the screen right now. Yes. Uh, how do I make the uh, rectangle not uh, be in the origin? Okay, yeah. Uh, so how to make the rectangle not to be in the origin. So in order to do that, uh, I'm going to move this rectangle a little bit away from the from the center now. Uh, somehow this. Uh, yeah, from, from the center. And in your case, I saw there's this scenario that you have a rectangle that you probably started from here, and then you are drawing like this. And in this case, you can move around these, but you cannot really move around this because it's snapped. Uh, but what you can see here, so there are these two icons, uh, so constraints. So you can actually click on them, you can select them, and you can delete them. And this will uh, free the 
the point but now there's gonna be another problem oh uh, yeah so you have to click once more and yeah so these two points they were snapped to the center line um, to the center point of the stage but now to now to uh, connect these together so the easiest way is to delete the left one and then hit L to create a line and then just create a new line and then it's uh, going to be closed automatically or like the other thing is just to delete everything and just create a new rectangle from scratch this X actually doing? You were choosing the lines and then why, why did you want now these like dashed lines? Ah, the dashed lines we wanted because uh, we wanted to create the center point here. Yeah. Uh, so, and uh, this is the, the, the best way, yeah. like the, one of the ways how to create it, just by using the midline constraints. Yeah. So constraints, uh, so there are different kind of constraints that you can see also in the sketch palette. Mm -hmm. um, and the midpoint constraint is this. Um, and uh, so you don't have to use the icon directly from here, but you can use it also. So these kind of constraints are integrated in the interface. So whenever you are creating a line and hovering uh, another line somewhere in the interface, then when you you hover the midpoint of a line then it should show you where where is the so this triangle actually means the same as the triangle okay. here okay. and uh, yeah when now we when we have this midpoint we can select it so we can click on it and then we can use the coincident um, constraints in order to snap it to the center point of the of our sketch here and now when you will drag around these points you should see that the center is always uh, snapped to the to the center of the stage like this oh, so where did you get the dashed lines? Uh, the dashed lines you can get by selecting the lines and then clicking on the construction icon here in the sketch palette or hitting X. Uh, yeah, next thing is um, we need to specify the size of the, mm -hmm. of the rectangle. Um, so let's say that our box is going to be 15 by 15 centimeters or 150 by 150. I put it center. I didn't put it in the center. It was center there else. Yeah, so you can, yeah, it's, it's possible also to start with not putting in the center, but it's just going to pay back uh, later when we are going to start uh, doing other things. Um, now, uh, in order to use precise measurements, there's a, a concept in, in Fusion 360 in an AutoCAD program, so which is called the dimension. And to create a dimension, um, you can either go to sketch sketch dimension in the menu or you can use the shortcut D and once you click on it then you have to specify two elements or two features from the drawing to create a dimension between them I'm going to select the left uh, top point and the bottom line and at this point you should have a uh, yeah, like a dimension that you can uh, position yourself um, as you like, and and then when you when you finish positioning and you click, um, then Fusion is going to ask you to enter uh, the size um, in millimeters. So depending on where where you live, maybe you're using an imperial system, but uh, like in Europe you use millimeters. So you should enter a value in, in millimeters and. Uh, 15 centimeters in millimeters is 150 millimeters. So you enter the size and hit enter. And you do the same for the top left point and right line. 
um, also enter 150 millimeters. And yeah, and now at this point we should have a fully constrained sketch. Um, and to to identify or to tell whether the sketch is fully constrained or not, you should check the icon here in the sketches panel. Um, and if it has a little pin uh, in the in the top left uh, corner, then then that means that the sketch is fully constrained. Uh, but then, for example, if we try to delete one of the dimensions now, uh, we will be able to see that the little pin has disappeared, and that means that the sketch is not fully constrained. It means that we can still move these points around, and it can become uh, unpredictable, unpredictable at some point. So we better add these two dimensions um, in order to make it uh, fully constrained. Some reason I'm unable to activate this. Uh, Top sketch here in the sketch palette. Uh, and by using shift and middle mouse button um, or I think you could use shift and um, two finger swipe on, on, the, on the Apple touch board you can pan around the sketch so it's actually a plane in a three-dimensional world like shift and the mouse middle button and then if you use the mouse middle button just uh, just like that alone, it's the middle button, so the cent center, so the, the uh, rolling one, the roller, it should be also, in, you should be able to press it as well. Yeah, in most, uh, so 3D, if you navigate in a 3D world, it's kind of a more complex operation. So in most of the 3D, 3D modeling softwares, you will see something like that, that you, you can use the middle mouse button in order to... Yeah. And uh, if you right-click on, uh, on the sketch, uh, it's going to become selected. And uh, at this point, you can do uh, many things with it. You can extrude it for example so this is what we are going to do but but what we before we extrude um, I'm gonna introduce you to where a very powerful concept in Fusion 360 which uh, can uh, help you to uh, to adjust things in last minute sometimes um, and in this case uh, it's what we can predict that we might need change in in the last minute in the future it is going to be uh, the thickness of the material that we are going to use so under the modify panel, you will find an item that is um, called change parameters. When you click on it, you will uh, you'll get this parameters panel, and uh, there's going to be a field uh, marked user parameters with a plus button over here. And what we are going to do is we are going to create a new parameter by clicking this plus button, and we are going to give it a name, uh, material thickness. Uh, also, notice that I am not using spaces here because this is more like a variable name like in, a pro in programming. And in programming, usually, if you are specifying, uh, if you are defining, declaring, and defining a variable, you try you try to avoid spaces. You usually don't have spaces, but you have many conventions how to type it in. So, in in my case, I'm using capitalized uh, camel case. Uh, uh, for the units, uh, we are going to leave millimeters, of course, uh, but you can specify yeah, any other. So you could also add a degree, uh, add a parameter that would be degrees, like an angle. Um, yeah, there are like all kinds of things here. Yeah. Uh, we need millimeters, uh, and we are going to assume that our material is uh, 15 millimeters thick. So it's going to be like a 15 millimeter plywood sheet. We can also enter comments, for example, so the like, thickness of my plywood. And hit OK, and the uh, parameter appears here, marked as a user parameter. Then we hit OK in the, for the parameters panel, and uh, now it's saved in the, in the project. And uh, we can actually use it for extruding this plane. So in order to extrude, uh, we can use directly this uh, create extrude um, 
so create extrude or shortcut E uh, function. And uh, if the plane is selected, it is going to automatically go to the um, click and drag mode. So you can just drag it upwards uh, in order to uh, specify the thickness visually. But what we are interested in, we are actually interested in, in uh, a really uh, precise thickness, uh, the material thickness that we just specified. So in this field that you see here, like the distance, you should start to type material thickness and you will see if you did the parameter part correctly then you should see that it's uh, it's trying to auto complete so it's going to show you the material thickness here so you click on that and hit enter and you should end up with a with a yeah so we have a base for the box already so like with a 3d object that is going to be uh, going to be base uh, of our box um, so I think I skipped one thing, so at this point uh, you, you really don't want to lose your project because of uh, you know, computer issues or something freezes or if something breaks in the middle you would like to open your project again and start, start from where you left off. Um, so thus you should save your project and uh, for this is uh, to sort of show, so this data panel is very useful. Um, and uh, yeah, if you go back to the root of the data panel by using the, the arrow that I just used, so this, this little arrow here, then uh, you'll see that uh, there's a button uh, labeled new project uh, over here. So you can use this, this button to create a new project. So let's say you are starting with Fusion 360, uh, you know that you are going to, going to go through uh, many tutorials. So you want to create a new project that's going to be called tutorials. Uh, double click to enter it. Where did it go? Operation failed. Uh, okay, so it might be that uh, I actually am not able to create this because I need to refresh my account. Uh, I'm just gonna do it under the Auto Fab Lab um, project, and I'm just hitting Command S to save it, uh, and uh, I'm gonna call it Box, and hit Save like this. So now I'm all set. I will close the, I will hide the data panel, uh, and so we are back here in the 3D view. Um, so yeah, in order to create other elements, uh, we'll need more sketches. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing is that uh, in Fusion 360, you can create these sketches on uh, any planar or non-planar surface. And in this case, uh, so yeah, when you select the sketch icon. You can select the top uh, plane of, of the 3D object that we just created, so the top part of, of the base of the box. So let's do that, um, and we are entering the, uh, the sketch mode again. And in this case, uh, we are going to create a sketch for one of the side walls, um, which is going to be the longer wall. So again, I'm just gonna st I'm starting out with a random rectangle, uh, trying not to constrain it with, uh, anywhere. So I, I'm not trying to you know snap the the corner to any of the corners uh, because I want to introduce you to uh, to the different uh, constraints that can be used. Uh, so in this case, uh, we are going to use the coincident uh, constraint, uh, well the same as, as that we used before with. Uh, with setting the center for the rectangle, but this can be also very useful to set uh, corners like this, and we want to do it also with the uh, left bottom corner. And we want this left bottom corner to coincide with the left bottom corner of the box, and yeah, at this point we see that yeah. Uh, we, we cannot move 
the left the left line uh, anymore. We also cannot control the the height of the, of the rectangle, but like the left the, the last part that we can control that we can move is the is the right um, the right line or the right side of the rectangle. And uh, what do we want to do? What do we want it to be? Uh, so if it's a side, if it's if it's going to be a wall, and we are going to use the same material for for the wall as for the base. We want to we want to say set a distance between these lines, uh, and this distance is going to represent the material thickness. Uh, and this is again uh, the place where we can use the parameter that we created in, uh, that we created a few steps before. Uh, in order to make use of it, uh, let's create a new dimension. So sketch, sketch dimension. Select one point here, so the bottom left point, and then the right line and we should have a dimension appearing and again instead of a number uh, start typing material thickness and it's gonna fusion is going to automatically replace this with um, with a number uh, so with the thickness that we define in this variable so namely 15 centimeters or 15 millimeters sorry yeah, and now we can again see that uh, the sketch is fully constrained. So here there's the little pin appearing. So again, if we delete the dimension, then it's not there. Um, but we need a dimension for the sketch to be fully constrained. And yeah, that's good. Can I ask? Sorry? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have a question because I got lost. <laughs> I could not move any more the, the, the right line in like a row. Mm -hmm. oh, is there like... You can double like click on the sketches. So like here, these, these are the sketches that have like been created. Yeah, and then... Oh, there it is. Yeah, you can use this for example. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which might work. Yeah. Um, okay, so... <coughs> and like, it's always one piece, like one sketch, like one... No, you can you can create a uh, like a complicated sketch, but yeah. the downside of sketches is that it's not being really recorded as a step here, like in this uh, yeah. um, history line. So in this project history, mm -hmm. so which means it's sometimes uh, you know when you want to go a step back, um, then you have you don't have this flexibility anymore that that this timeline offers. Uh, if you make a really complex sketch, if you make you know simple, simple sketches, uh, like let's say a feature of a design object, uh, one sketch, then it's gonna be much easier for you to control uh, the overall hmm. development of the of the design, so to say. Uh, yeah, I mean, later on, the sketch is much easier. It's a full sketch. Of course, like simple sketches are much more manageable than complex sketches. You know, it's just uh, you know, uh, you you don't, you know, you can uh, I mean, you can be a transhumanist and believe that uh, you know your brain doesn't have any limits and uh, and all that. But on an everyday basis, you you will realize that you know you have only these uh, fifteen hours of being awake, and then you have like you know perception limits, and uh, you you have limits of understanding complexity. So you better focus on, uh, you know, if you if you really need to manage something, you really better focus on things that you can, that are manageable, respectively simple sketches. And then if you start with a complex sketch and then, you know, work on it for two days and then uh, like start extruding and a week or two passes and then you realize that the sketch is wrong, and you have to start everything from scratch, then it's worse that you that you are focusing on simple sketch and you. you just have to change one of these simple ske sketches along the way, and then uh, yeah, it's it's less. Uh, it's, there's a less uh, lesser possibility to lose time. But yeah, it depends. Sometimes it is it is also good to learn the hard way. So <laughs> yeah, if you start with the complex sketches, maybe you're good with it. Maybe you are you have a really clear idea in your mind, and you you create this complex sketch, and um, and everything works fine. But then. Yeah, so that I I I should like more like um, suggest to to use this, this simple sketch approach. Yeah, actually, this is also what what Yanne said, for example. Also, I was discussing this Fusion three hundred and sixty issue, and he was mentioning that yeah, 
the first thing that you should you teach your students is that uh, they shouldn't put everything in one sketch. <laughs> yeah. Keep it simple, uh, separated, and manageable. And you can apply it to many things, not just Fusion 360 sketches. So, yeah, I just clicked the stop button, so stop sketch button. Uh, and now we have a nice sketch here on one of the sides of our, of our box. And obviously what we want to do, we want to extrude it. So select the extrude tool here, I just hit A. Um, and select the, the sketch, um, the planar face which you want to extrude. And again, so you can do it manually. Uh, but I'm going to enter a number, so I'm going to enter 75, so I'm going to extrude it by 75 millimeters. Uh, but don't hit enter yet. Uh, check the extrude uh, panel. So even if you hit enter, now at this point you will see that it's uh, automatically merging with the existing object, but it is, it is not what we want. We want to keep it separated, uh, but if this happened to you, then don't worry, you can go to this uh, history uh, um, uh, kind of list list of historical events and you can click on the last timeline, timeline yes exactly on the last feature uh, you can double click and you'll see that the ed editor interface of this uh, process opened again and uh, what we want to do we want to change the operation from join to new body So once we do that, uh, and we hit OK, we should have two separate bodies at this point. Yeah, so the bottom body and the top body. So you'll, you'll see better if I will enable like this shaded with hidden edges, or shaded <coughs> with visible edges only mode. So yeah, we should have two selectable objects now. What did I, it, and if this didn't happen, then what should I do? The, there's only one body. Do I have? I, I don't know. Not that dark. Okay. I can see. <laughs> Great, so we are so far, um, and now there's a really cool feature um, that we, we are going to use, uh, which is called mirroring. So we can clone objects uh, we don't have to recreate this this wall from scratch. We can just copy it over to the other side by using a midplane. And uh, so one of the reasons why we created uh, this base sketch, so the first sketch uh, we created in the in the center of the of the stage, is that so we could use the origin features, which are on this X Y Z axis. So this X Y Z axis. And then these planes in between these axes, so plane in between the x, y axis, plane in between the x, z axis, and the y, z. And in this case, we are going to use the y, z axis uh, as a mirror, or like a midline, for mirroring the, the left, uh, so the, the wall on the left side. And in order to do that, uh, we should click... Um, on the create menu and there's gonna be an item that's called mirror and click on that <coughs> so create mirror and it's going to open a mirror panel um, and there are three parameters so the pattern type you should select bodies because at this point we are creating new bodies and for the objects, you can select one or multiple. Um, so in our case, we are just going to select one. It's going to be this one, so the, the wall. And then mirror plane, you have to click on this selector here. And then once the selector is selected, you can select the actual plane that we are going to use as the plane to mirror around. And once you click on that, you will see that there's a phantom uh, image like phantom wall, like a copy, uh, like a ghost of a, of the object that is going to be created uh, when this action is going to be completed. So on the other side, so you see that like a preview of the operation. Okay. Should like uh, yeah, it should look like this. Uh, 
the lines and mirror planes and all that. And you hit OK. And uh, yeah, you already have a almost almost ready box, uh, almost something that looks like a box. So this is more like a U U profile. Um, and yeah, next step is uh, we are going to create another sketch on um, on the top side of the of the base of the box. So in order to do that, select the create sketch uh, option here and click on the top of of this base surface. Uh, so the same as before. So previously we to create the sketch for the side walls. Um, yeah, we did the same. So we click and uh, automatically we also get all the drawings, uh, so all the features that have been created before, so all these lines that we can reuse uh, in our design to reference our, our new sketch. Which one did you um, I didn't hear. <laughs> just a sec, I'll just uh, go back one step. So I did this create sketch. And then the next step is to click on uh, the surface where you want to create the sketch, like this. Mm. So you go in, into, into that. Uh, and again, let's start by creating a random rectangle. It's, uh, yeah, just uh, click this two-point rectangle or hit R on your keyboard and and make a rectangle. Uh, and then, yeah, again, repeat the same things that we did before with the previous sketch. So we need to snap these two uh, bottom corner points to, to the points over here. Uh, so I'll demonstrate. So I'll select this um, left bottom point and then I will click on the coin seeds coincident uh, constraint and then I will select the other point but make sure that you select the point here and then it will coincide and again so I'll select the other point and I'll click on coincident and again be very careful about you know hovering over slowly and really selecting the point so it should highlight a little bit when you hover over. So I'm gonna undo a few steps. You go to bodies and you hide the hide the base body for now. So you can use these bulbs here to hide and unhide the objects. And this will give you the opportunity to uh, see these. Ah, yeah, I think there's something else is activated here. Origin. What is visible there? One sketch. Yeah, well, this is the sketch that we are creating, you know. Well, then. Uh, maybe like some selection filters. Let's unselect everything. And just sketch points. So you would. Hmm. Ah, body vertices. Yeah. Now, yeah, with the filters, you can kind of also. So if you go to select uh, selection filters and you select body uh, body vertices only, then you should be able to click this this point straight away. Uh, but then after that, you should go to selection filters and um, select everything back again. And now you should be able to move this line, so it's still not not yet fully constrained. And you should add a dimension between the one of the bottom points and the top line. Sorry. So I like unselect everything except the body where it's 
Uh, no, what do you want me to do is, um, so at this point, so you have to use the, the left angle, right? Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, I can unselect everything there except the bottom part. Right? Mm -hmm. right. And, uh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be three. Yeah. So I'm going to click on stop sketch right here now. And uh, yeah, so we need to extrude this one again. So I, I will select the extrude uh, tool here again, um, or I can also hit E in order to do that. So and this is going to open the extrude panel in the state that is, uh, as it was uh, as we last used it. Uh, so with all the parameters here and with the operation new body. But once we are going to try to do something, it's going to automatically change to join. But we again, we don't want that. We want to set the operation to new body again. So be careful with that. And then for the height of it, um, we can actually we can enter the same number as we entered for the uh, for the other wall um, but since we, we we are humans and we don't remember exactly what the number was so we can um, use the help of computer aided design and uh, so here in the extrude panel there's this extent parameter and instead of distance uh, so this is extent option so instead of distance we can choose two objects And once we hit that, then we can select an object, which can be a face in, in, the, in the model, like this. And it's going to extrude uh, until the object in the, in the design that we are creating. And it's going to automatically detect what, how much uh, that extent that we want to use for extrusion is, like this. And then you hit OK, and it's all there. I can also reveal the base of the body again. So I'm going to repeat. Um, so here, here I have the sketch. So I click the extrude tool. I click on the uh, sketch that I want to extrude. I go a little bit up. I change the operation from join to new body. And for the extent, I will select two object. And then for the object that I want to use for the extent, I will select this top um, top face of uh, one of the walls, and it's gonna automatically extrude me until until the end of that wall. And then I hit OK, and the wall is there. And now, um, if you remember then you can use the same way of m mirroring that we used before with the other wall. So I'm just gonna go and uh, select the create mirror option. So in the mirror menu, in the mirror panel here, I will select the pattern type bodies. And for the objects, I'm gonna select the wall that we just created and then for the mirror plane I will select the the plane that is in between X and, and Z axis so or the plane that is perpendicular to the wall that you want to mirror and again you have a ghosty wall and when we hit OK the ghosty wall transforms into a real wall Okay, so now we have a box, um, and uh, so yeah, we could stop here. But uh, if we want to want to cut that box with a laser cutter or with uh, with a CNC, we'll and afterwards assemble it. We probably don't want to mess with uh, something as toxic as glue. We just want it to snap together. Uh, normally, and for snapping it together, we will need uh, the snap together joints to design some snap together joints. And we are going to uh, start with the side joints of, of this. Um, so I'm gonna hide the walls that I'm going to ignore for this process for now. 
And basically what we will do, we are going to create a, a sketch on this side of this shorter wall. And this sketch is, is going to define a, a profile for, for the joint that we are going to create. Um, in order to move forward, so we again s click on the create sketch icon and we select the side plane like this. Uh, so we enter the sketch mode now. And the first step would be to create a midline, um, a horizontal midline that would split this uh, wall in two, like this. And I'm also going to select it and convert it into a construction line. Uh, I was just uh, yeah. I will move a few steps back. So I select the line, okay, well, and then I uh, you know I hover this side yeah, okay. no, line, it. and there's a triangle yeah. like this, I and then I hit that. escape. I <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Maybe others didn't. <laughs> and then yeah, I select that and click on construction. And then uh, we need to create two lines, uh, one above and one below the construction line. And let's try to make them perpendicular um, to, the, to the other lines as well, like this. So you can, you can see when, when uh, I just finished to draw it, draw it, and it also has like this little perpendicular constraint sign over here. That means that it's perpendicular to the line uh, to this right line here. Um, then I will create another line here, like this. Now, when you move these lines, they should, you know, or one of these points, then they should. So they are, yeah, the line should move normally like this. Not just the point, but also the the opposite point should move uh, together with the uh, with the point that you are moving like this. Um, so now, uh, at this point, we are going to use a really interesting constraint, which is called the symmetry constraint, uh, which you can find over here. Like it's the last constraint in the in the constraint list in the sketch palette. So make sure that you have unselected everything. Just by clicking anywhere uh, on the on the sketch and uh, click on the symmetry constraint until it lights up blue. And from this point on, you'll have to do three clicks. The two, cl two first clicks uh, are going to define the objects that have to be <coughs> symmetrized, if I uh, say it correctly. And then the third click is going to be the midline or the mirroring line, the symmetry line. Um, and it's going to look like this, so pay attention. So one, two, and three and these icons are going to appear. And what is what this is going to cause is going to cause uh, a symmetrical distance from this symmetry line uh, for the both lines uh, for, that, are, that are above and, and below the symmetry line. So try to repeat that. So I, I will, I'll show you one more time. So come on Z. Uh, so yeah, I'm still at the point where I can move these separately. So what I do, I click somewhere else to deselect everything. Uh, then I click on the symmetry icon here. Then I select the first line, the second line, and then the symmetry line. And now I can move them. And how, how did I do that dust line? I over, over. Well, which okay. one? This construction. Construction line. Like I could not select the line to make it. Mm, that's interesting. Mm. Oh, now it's not. Oh, yeah, you just select it. Mm. 
So yeah, so the next thing that's sort of from this point is that uh, we need to create a dimension for this. So we want to, so if you consider that this wall is 75 um, millimeters tall, then we might need like one third or one half of it to be the joint. So I'm going to click to unselect everything on the stage and I'm going to hit to create a new D to create a new dimension. And I'm going to select this point and the bottom line. And here I see, so 30 seems like a good number. Uh, so I could also change it to 35, but like 30. This is going to be our joint. Uh, yeah, so it could be also 35. Or we could also, if you if you are adventurous uh, and ambitious enough, that you can create uh, it also as another parameter. And I'm going to click stop sketch, and uh, here we go. So we have a ready sketch here on the side of this wall. And now we can use extrude once more. So I'm going to click on this extrude uh, icon again. And I'm going to select this uh, rectangle over here on the side of this wall. And uh, as always, I can freely extrude it uh, like this. But I am going to use the material thickness uh, variable that we created earlier. And again, in the extrude panel, uh, we have to set this operation to new body instead of join. Because later we are going to... So after we extrude it, we will mirror it to the other side of the object, actually. It's a new body, and OK. So here we are. And the next step is that we are going to mirror it. So we are going to go to Create, Mirror, Select Bodies as the pattern type. For the objects, we are going to select this joint that we just created. And for the mirror plane, I hit on this selector here. For the mirror plane, we are again going to choose the plane that is uh, perpendicular uh, to the joint. And here we go. So we have a, a ghost object over here. Yeah, so let's try to get this far now. Okay, so now if we unhide the the other short uh, wall here, we see that it doesn't, it still doesn't have these joints, and uh, we can just we we are not going to repeat it from the sketch level, but we are just going to clone these or to mirror these uh, in, on top of uh, on top of the sides of this shorter wall. So again, we just go to create mirror select these two joints um, as objects and then for the mirror plane select another plane that is in between z and x axis in my case and yeah and it's gonna create these uh, two ghosty looking joints over here hit ok to confirm so now we have it um, and at this point, uh, yeah, once we have cloned and mirrored all these uh, joints, we actually want to join them together with the walls. We want them to be a part of this wall, uh, because at the end of, of the day, we, we want the laser to kind of, uh, go around these joining lines and cut them out as, uh, as whole pieces instead of uh, leaving, uh, leaving them uh, separate. Uh, and for that, we have... Um, a new function, uh, a new tool that is called the combine tool. So you can find it, uh, you can find it under the modify tool. So it's modify combine, and it is going to let us do all kinds of combination or subtraction operations with the uh, with the objects. So I will click on that, and again, there's a it's a panel appearing, a combine panel, and uh, yeah, usually it, you have to select only one target body, and in our case it's going to be one of the walls. 
and then the tool bodies and the tool bodies are going to be the joints for each of the wall and then we need to select the operation so uh, automatically it is set to join in my case and then there are other options and like new component and keep tools checkboxes they should be unchecked like as, as you can see here I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to repeat the same with the other wall as well so I'm going to go to modify combine I'm going to select the other wall as the target body and the joints as the tool bodies operation join and both of the checkboxes unchecked and hit OK it matter in this case if, which one is the uh, target body um, actually, maybe it doesn't. It's just, it somehow naturally makes sense in my case. I mean, for joining, it really doesn't matter. So you can select any of the bodies. Just if you would uh, have like a really careful naming uh, in, into the bodies panel over here, then maybe it would matter because the uh, resulting object is going to have the name of the, of, the, yeah, okay, yeah. of the main body. Uh, so yeah, let's try to get this far. I'm showing only a one way, but there are many ways how to achieve the same, so it's, it's you're fine. Um, now, uh, instead of, you know, creating sketches and um, and uh, things for the for the other um, for the other walls so now when we unhide the the walls that we created with the joints we'll see that the other walls they still don't have uh, places where these short, where these joints should go um, so in order to solve that we are going again to use the combine tool so yeah, in case you missed so we, we, we want to create also the uh, there are the pockets for, for the joints, right? Um, so and for this, this combine tool, again, is very useful. So we go to modify, combine. And for the target body, uh, this time we are going to select uh, one, of the, one of the walls that do not have the pockets yet. And for the tool bodies, we are going to select the, both, of the, both of the sides that have the joints already. And uh, let's be careful, so select the operation to cut. And this time, we need to select the Keep Tools uh, checkbox. Because I, I'll show you what happens when you don't. So if you don't and you click OK, then, then the walls that have joints, they, they disappear. But we want to keep them. In order to keep them, we need to select this Keep Tools uh, checkbox. And then we hit OK, and they're fine. And now we can see when we hide the side walls with the joints, we see that they actually cut out the, the joints here, so the, the pockets. And we need to do the same with the other wall as well. So we go to modify, combine, we select the longer wall as the target body, and we select the side walls with the joints as, as tool bodies. We make sure the operation is cut. Uh, we select keep tools and hit OK. And here we go. So let's try to get this far. Yeah, and um, so lastly, we need to create a joint uh, 
that is going to uh, connect uh, the sides of the of the box to the to the bottom of the box. And in order to do that, we need to hide the bottom of the box for a little bit. And we need to choose one of the walls uh, for the sketch. Um, and we are going to create a new sketch by using the Create Sketch tool. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to select one of the uh, bottom sides of the walls. Click on that. So now we are in the sketch mode. And let's start with creating another midline. So I'm going to select the line tool and then create a midline, horizontal midline here. That will split one of the walls in half. And then I'm going to hit escape and select the midline and uh, create, uh, turn it into a construction line. In a similar way as we did with the other joints, um, I'm going to create one line above it and one line below it. Like this. So they should be perpendicular and parallel. And again, I'm going to use the symmetry tool to select one of the lines, the second of the lines, and then the symmetry line to make them symmetrical. So now if, they, if I move them, then they... Ah, yeah, they, they didn't, I didn't manage to make them perpendicular. Uh, in a minute, I will repeat the process. So now I just created this midline so I'm gonna create the top line this doesn't let me create the something wrong going on so yeah here I could use separately the perpendicular constraints so I'm gonna click on that the first line and the second line and now it's gonna make it turn it into a perpendicular line yeah there's something not right here so I'm just gonna create a line that is not perpendicular and then I'm gonna use the perpendicular constraint and click on the line and then the line it should be perpendicular to and it's gonna make it perpendicular yeah and now at this point I can actually play around with symmetry so I'm gonna click on symmetry on the top line the bottom line and then the symmetry line and now they are moving symmetrically uh, and at this point I'm gonna create the dimension like this and in this case uh, so taking into account that our box is 150 uh, millimeters by 150 I'm going to make the joint to be 80 millimeters or maybe 70 yeah 70 or even maybe less like 65 65 to good no 60 <laughs> sorry uh, yeah and then I'm going to stop the sketch and use the extrude tool so I'm gonna click on this extrude icon here then I will select the profile that we just created, this one. Uh, and instead of join operation, I'm going to choose again a new body operation. And for the distance uh, or the extrusion value, I'm going to enter the material thickness. Again, hit enter. So I'll just check once more if it's the material thickness. Okay, yes it is. Yeah, so we should arrive to this point now. Uh, we have the joint on the bottom side of the object. The joint ready on the bottom side. Yeah. Actually, uh, I didn't make, so I should make the dimension now. Yeah, <coughs> well, okay. Um, so, and this time we are not going to mirror it. So I see you mirrored it already. Ah, yes. <laughs> uh, like, for once to be like... <laughs> uh, we are going to use another, um, another, uh, another thing, uh, interesting uh, way of um, replicating those. So under Create, uh, there's a Pattern submenu, and there's a thing that's called Circular Pattern. 
you select that and for the pattern type we will select bodies again so since we are working with whole bodies and for the objects we are going to select the joint that we just created and it's gonna ask so we need to specify an axis and uh, this is again really nice that we created uh, the initial sketcher around the around the origin uh, at the, the center of the stage because it doesn't make us so we don't need to create extra construction planes or axes so the, the basic axes that we need are, are already there so when we select the Z axis as the axis to rotate uh, rotate around it and you can see already that there are like these ghosty objects appearing but they are in the wrong locations because the quantity of the objects that we want to have at the end is set to three but we want to have four joints for, for, for the four walls so we change this value to four and we hit OK and now we have all four joints <coughs> so you let's try did you click OK? Okay, and then now the next task is to join these uh, together with the with the actual walls. So we can use the combine operation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify combine. For the target body, I'm going to select one of the walls. For the tool bodies, I'm going to select the uh, according to the the, the joint that is that is um, seemingly connected to the wall and for the operation I should use join this time and I don't need to keep tools so I just want to end up with having one solid object and then I'll hit OK and I'm going to repeat it for with every wall so modify combine target body is going to be one of the walls tool bodies is going to be the joint the operation is going to be joint and both of these should be unchecked so empty and I'm going to end up with solid object and then again modify combine target body one of the walls tool bodies is the joint operation join and empty checkboxes Again, modify, combine, select the, one of the walls, then join, and empty checkboxes, and OK. Now we have solid walls. So we should get this far now. I'll just check what's going on in the channel. <coughs> Looks like nobody's watching it. <laughs> yeah, so let's try to get it this far. Is it possible to If I would just delay it somehow, this body 11. Yes, yeah, it combined. I don't know why. So still these points are yeah. 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 It's strange. Yeah. Okay, and now, um, so the last step is uh, that we need to cut um, pockets with these tools out of the bottom. So this is the bottom plane. And again, so we use the modify combine tool. And this time is going to be really easy. So, as the target body, we specify the bottom, and as the tool bodies, we specify uh, all the all the walls around. And for the operation, we select cut, and we want to keep the tools. We so we select the keep tools option and hit OK. And now, if I hide all the walls, I will see that. I have the pockets here. 
and now I can click save and I can enter a message that the box is ready. Okay, and that's it. So, thank you very much, and um, see you next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>